Hi, in this video, we would look at intracellular receptors. Now, we have already seen receptors displayed on the cell surface and how they work in this entire cell signaling playlist. Now, we look at a different type of receptor, which is known as intracellular receptor. As the name suggests, they are present in the intracellular site, either in the cytoplasm or in the nucleus. They have unique structural features which we would be discussing in this video. Along with that, we would discuss their functions. First, let's discuss their structure a little bit. The unique feature about nuclear receptor is they have intrinsic transcription factor activity. Like in case of growth signaling pathways and receptor tyrosine kinase, we found that the receptor has intrinsic enzymatic activity, intrinsic uh, tyrosine kinase enzymatic activity. In this case, we find the receptor has an intrinsic transcription factor activity, which might lead to transcription activation, and it can bind to the DNA. So the receptor itself can bind to the DNA in a ligand-dependent manner. If we look at the genetic sequence of it, we would see it is distributed in several domains namely A slash P, C, D, E, and F. And we would look at what these domains do. First of all, the AF1 and the AF2 domains interact with the RNA polymerase and the general transcription factors. So they are also known as transcription activation domains. The ligand binding domain is the most important one, which bind to the ligands. And this ligand binding lead to dimerization, either homodimerization or heterodimerization, we which we would look at in this video. Now, the important most domain is the DNA binding domain. Now, the DBD has the DNA binding feature, and we would look at what is the DNA binding structure. So, from this structure, when it is transcribed and translated, it forms the nuclear receptor protein complex, which has the and now in this particular view, we are seeing a receptor monomer, which is able to bind the ligand in the ligand binding domain or a dimerization domain. Now, the DNA binding domain consists of zinc finger motif. Now, zinc finger motif is an important DNA binding domain. Want to know more about the zinc finger motifs and other DNA binding domain? The link of this video is given at the end of end screen. Now, the zinc finger motif, which is present in the DNA binding domain, binds to the major groove of the DNA. And several groups projecting out from the zinc finger domain alpha helices actually interact with the bases present in the major groove. And depending upon the bases that are projecting out of these alpha helices, determine the sequence specificity where these nuclear receptors actually bind. And they bind to a specific region known as hormone response element, which we would learn in a moment. So far, we have seen signal transduction paradigms where the ligand binds to the extracellular receptor, which is displayed on the membrane surface. So the ligand is external ligand. And then a cascade of second messenger and many other intermediate molecules relay the signal to the nucleus which might lead to a transcriptional change. But in case of nuclear receptor, things are different. The ligand can bind uh, getting inside the cell. So the ligand is freely diffusible from the membrane. And we would learn about the ligand in a moment. But at normal state, states, there are two different kinds of intracellular receptor. One, which is residing in the cytoplasm such as this particular receptor, once it is residing in the cytoplasm, it is in an inactivated state and that is stabilized by heat shock protein 90. But when ligand bind to it, and in this case, the ligand can easily pass through the cell membrane and can directly enter the cytosol, there is a shift of HSP90 and HSP90 dissociates from the complex. As a result, this ligand bind receptor is free to translocate into the nucleus. Once it is in the nucleus, it can interact with the RNA polymerase 1 and the RNA pole, and 
the general transcription factor, which would ultimately lead to transcriptional activation. So we can clearly understand that ligand-mediated transcriptional activation is the mode of action of nuclear receptors. Now, if we look carefully and in a lot more details about the nuclear receptors, we will understand that there are several motifs onto the DNA where these intracellular receptors can bind. For example, if we talk about estrogen receptor, there would be a estrogen response element, which is a specific hexameric sequence followed by a gap and another hexameric repeat sequences. And in this particular sequence feature, the zinc finger motif of the receptors actually bind. They generally bind in format of a homodimer in case of these steroid receptors. The homodimers first bind to the ligand, then they translocate as a dimer into the nucleus, where they can lead to transcriptional activation. Now, there are other kind of nuclear receptors, which are already present in the nucleus. They are intracellular receptor, but moreover, they are nuclear receptor. They are not located in the cytoplasm. So they are located in the nucleus, sitting on the DNA, waiting for the ligand to bind. But while they are not bound to the ligand, they are generally bound with the repressor complex, such that transcription cannot happen at that moment. But the moment when the ligand is binding to the receptor, the, recept the re repressor complex is dissociated. As a result of derepression, RNA polymerase can bind and other general transcription can bind to the DNA and that lead to transcriptional activation. Looking at lot more details to it, we would understand most, most, mostly these receptors are actually heterodimer. Retinoic acid receptor and its family fall under these classes. Just like estrogen receptors and other steroid receptors, it has specific retinoic acid response element where it binds. But it, it forms generally a heterodimer. Only one of the heterodimer, one of the monomer of these heterodimer complex bind to the ligand. The other doesn't bind to the ligand. Now, when the ligand is not bound at that particular situation, it, the whole nucle the nuclear receptor complex is bound to a co-repressor. Mostly, the co-repressor is found to be NCOR and SMRT in case of retinoic acid receptor. These are just names, but these imagine these are co-repressor complexes. Mostly they are associated with histone deacetylase, which can really deacetylate the chromatin near this region and make that chromatin more compact and inappropriate for transcriptional start. Now let's see what happens when the ligand binds. When the ligand binds, that leads to a conformational change in this whole complex. A portion of this complex has E3 ubiquitin ligase activity, which ubiquitinylate a particular portion of this NCOR. When it is polyubiquitinylated, it is degraded by ubiquitin proteasome mediated pathway. So the co repressor complex falls off actually. Now, when the repressor complex is gone, in presence of ligand, the activator or the coactivator can bind to this dimer. Along with this coactivator, several components such as histone acetyl transferase, histone methyl transferase, nucleosome remodelers, etc., can bind to it. We can name that an activator complex. As you can understand, histone acetyl transferase would acetylate the histones near this region, making the chromatin more accessible towards the transcription factors. Histone methyl transferase can also transfer several methylation to the histone residues which are activatory. Nucleosome remodelers can change the spacing and change the density of the nucleosomes, freeing up a space for transcriptional start. As a result of this activator complex binding, the general transcription factors and the RNA pol 2 can bind to the retino uh, bind to the promoter and lead to transcription activation. We pretty much covered the mechanism, at least the basics of it, how nuclear receptor works at a molecular level. Let's take an example that these two distinct paradigms 
where we calling the first one as a cytoplasmic receptors where the nu receptor is residing in the cytoplasm later get translocated into the nucleus and second one where the receptor is already in the nucleus and waiting for the ligand to bind for starting the transcription so glucocorticoid melanocorticoid androgens progesterones and vitamin d fall under the first category of cytoplasmic receptor both of these categories are actually intercellular receptors whereas retinoic acid receptors thyroid receptors ppar and liver x receptor all these things falls under the nuclear receptor category we also discussed the similarity and dissimilarity of mode of action of these two different regimes of intercellular receptor pathways now have you ever wondered that what are the difference between major growth signaling pathways and nuclear receptor signaling pathway so the growth signaling pathways takes a lot of time because there are so many intermediate mediators that convey the signal to the nucleus whereas nuclear receptor signaling is pretty fast right it saves the cell a hell lot of time it is a quick response but the big problem is it doesn't have a signal amplification capability now can you think about that why the cell at all need a growth factor signaling which is little bit slower and if the cell has a option to use a signaling paradigm which is way more faster and quick important for quick response why at all we have signal amplification system the whole answer lies in the demand there are many cases where the ligand is less and you need to really amplify the signal coming from the ligand in order for the nucleus to understand some of the cases the ligand might be abundant in that situation signal amplification is not required rather than a fast and quick response is preferred we would learn about about more of these kind of discussions in a different video but for now we're pretty much done with the concept of nuclear receptor and how they work at a molecular level so I hope this in video was informative and if you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and thanks for listening. Please comment and your comment gives me so much motivation to make new videos. So don't forget to comment. Thank you.